Right, okay. Um, what I'm going to try and do this afternoon is, is talk you through a series of clips that's going to deal with basic exam technique for your GCSE geography exam. There are 10 clips in total and each one should last about 5 minutes unless I rub along for too long and each focuses on a different aspect of an exam paper. As you can see in front of you, we've got your first paper, component 1, Global Geographical Issues. And this clip is just going to talk you through some really, really basic but essential stuff that you've got to get right. This is actually last year's exam paper, okay, and paper one is always first, it's your global geographical issues. It lasts for an hour and a half, and as you can see in terms of equipment, you must have a calculator, there will be numeracy questions on here, you must also have a black pen, why black? Well because they scan the page and it's sent out to examiners via the internet. If anything is written in pencil or blue, it may not pick it up, that would include diagrams. So you must make sure that you draw and write absolutely everything in black pen. I don't think it would be a bad idea to take a long 30 centimetre ruler as well. It's just going to help you when you come to reading off graphs and charts and things like that. Now in terms of um, topics and sections, there are three sections to this exam. Okay, The three sections cover our three different topics. Section A is all about hazardous earth. Now this will be a mixture. This will be a mixture of tectonics, climate change, but also our tropical cyclones. And that all three questions are marked out of, I'll just get to the end of it, all three questions are marked out of 30. Now that becomes important when you think about the time because you've got an hour and a half. If you've got three sections, all with equal marks, then you spend half an hour on each section and no more. Okay? If you've got to the end of half an hour and you haven't finished that section, you move on. Okay? Section B is actually um, development dynamics, which is where we looked at development and we did a case study of an emerging country. Okay? And section C, which will be topic three, which is urbanising world. These are all, like I've said, the global ones. So the emphasis is not on the United Kingdom, but on global things. One of the questions will have four extra marks available. And it tells you this down here. So one of the eight mark extended writing questions will have four extra marks for spelling, punctuation and grammar. All right? We'll come on to that later. As it says on your instructions, really, really quite clearly, you have no choice of question. You must answer absolutely everything. Okay? And we talked about timing already, but the next thing to sort of stress is the style of questions. They will start off easy. They will start off with one mark, one mark, two mark, one mark, perhaps a three, perhaps another couple of ones and twos, maybe some fours, and they will always end with an eight mark extended writing. The structure of the paper is designed in that the easy mark questions are at the start and your more difficult extended writing is at the end. Each question will have numbers in brackets. That's how many marks it's worth, but it will also tell you the level of writing that you've got to go into. So here, for example, there's a three mark question. There is no point writing more than three sentences. Do not write eight sentences for a three mark question. Likewise, if you have a question where it's three marks and you write one sentence, there is no way that you can possibly get the maximum tariff. So a rule to think about is number in brackets, one mark, one sentence. It should also give you a rough indication of time. Eight marks, eight minutes. Three marks, three minutes. Another thing that you may not be aware of is it's positive marking. So whatever you write, you know, let's say you're answering this question here, you change your mind, you decide, well, I've not got that right, I'm going to write something else. Never cross anything out. Um, the exam will practice what's called positive marking. So if something is crossed out, they will not mark it. If you leave it, they will read it and they will mark it. So yeah, it might be wrong, but it might be right. And as an examiner, I have seen so many things that are right that candidates have crossed out and you can't give it credit. So even if you think you've written something completely stupid, just leave it in there, it's positive marking. As you can see from this first question, 
There are resources all over it. Diagrams, graphs, maps, charts, tables, and this continues throughout the paper. If there is a resource, use it. There is nothing to stop you scribbling all over this resource or highlighting the high points of the graph or the low points of the graph. If there is a resource, use it. Okay? Um, one or two other sort of minor things on this last section. You can see on this exam paper it says do not write in this area. And that is all the way through the exam paper. It goes back to what I said at the start. That bit is scanned. It's sent off via the internet and emailed out to the examiners. They don't see your whole paper. They will just mark specific questions. If you've written in here, the computer scanning system will not pick it up and you will not get any credit for it. So please just make sure that you are filling, you are not writing in these areas here. Um, a very, very sort of last and, and simple thing is the end. Um, it, it will say at the end of the exam, total marks for paper. Keep going until you see total marks for paper. Okay. One year they, they decided to put a question on the back of the exam paper for some reason and loads of candidates actually missed it. They hadn't realised that the exam had finished and stopped writing before the back page. So keep going until you see total marks. If something is blank, which always amuses me, they tell you it's a blank page. Now the reason that they're doing this is not to sort of waste time and ink, but they're informing you that there is nothing on there. Sometimes printing goes wrong um, and things don't always come out right. So they're actually informing you, yeah, you're right, there shouldn't be anything on here. Okay, right, that's it for the first one.